Hi everyone. My name is Scott Grant and I invest money. And we've been bringing you a tutorial every week to talk about different kinds of investing. And for the most part, I've talked about the stock market, which is you know, something that I, I like investing in. I think it's a great place to invest money. Uh, but there are other things that you can invest in. And I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about some of those. And particularly collectibles. And people often talk about collectibles. And the number one collectible is rare art. So, for instance, you know, one of, the, one of the people in the rare art or the fine art business who's amazingly popular is Pablo Picasso. And this is one of Picasso's paintings. It's uh, entitled La Femme d'Algier, uh, which translates as the women of Algiers. Let me zoom in on that. And this is version O. In fact, in fact, uh, Picasso uh, painted a number of versions of the, the women of Algiers. And this sold in uh, two th a couple years ago, 2019, I think, for $179 million. Which just in and of itself is a lot of money for anything. Uh, the guy who had sold it, that sold at Christie's, and the man who had purchased it, had purchased it uh, 20 years earlier uh, for $32 million. And of course, this made big news on the television. Thirty-two million dollars increased to one hundred seventy-nine million dollars. Uh, that's a hundred thirty million dollar increase. But it's only about a ten percent return, and and that's pretty good for art. Not all art did as well as Picasso during that period. And you got to remember, when the guy sold it, he sold it at auction. So it's the highest painting, the most expensive painting ever sold at auction, and Christie's would have taken about twenty percent. So over $30 million. Um, additionally, keeping something like this requires, uh, you know, some place to display it or at least store it. It needs to be insured. It needs to have burglar alarms and special um, temperature controls because it's, after all, worth almost $180 million. You might ask yourself, is that the most expensive painting ever sold? And the answer is no. The most expensive painting ever sold was Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> and this sort of points to a, a fact about uh, expensive collectibles. One of the things that's really important is scarcity. And obviously there's only one Leonardo da Vinci. So this sold for $450 million at a private auction, excuse me, a private sale, not an auction, through Christie's. And it was purchased by a Saudi prince by the name of Muhammad bin Salman for $450 million. Uh, that number brings to mind Andrew Carnegie because that's about what Andrew Carnegie was worth when he was the second richest man in the world in the early part of the 1900s. Uh, richest man was his sort of rival, uh, John D. Rockefeller, who almost could have afforded to buy two of these uh, at today's prices. Obviously, his money was worth a lot more. Um, I found this one interesting. I wanted to talk about it a little bit because this was in the various collections for centuries. And it was generally assumed that this was a copy a copy made by one of Leonardo da Vinci's pupils. And as it turns out, copies made by da Vinci's pupils have value, just not as much as an original Leonardo da Vinci. So for decades, or excuse me, centuries, they thought this was a copy. And at the worst case, it sold in 1958 for $100. <laughs> you know what you're thinking, why wasn't I there, you know? buy this in 1958 for $100. Uh, after that sale, various people discovered that it was actually a da Vinci. It was in horrible condition. And it's worth mentioning that with most collectibles, uh, particularly some of the ones that you uh, may collect, uh, condition matters dramatically. But it was in horrible condition. It was presumed to be a, a copy. And as a result, um, it sold for 100 bucks. And then much later, 60 plus years later. Uh, it sold for $450 million. 
condition matters uh, with collectibles. You know, people collect comic books and Barbie dolls and Star Wars figurines. And we often see a, a piece on the television where a, a Barbie or a Star Wars character sells for $100,000, maybe even more. And we go, I had that. Oh, my God, why didn't I keep it? And the problem is you probably played with yours. And when they sell for that kind of price, it's because they've been kept you know, hermetically sealed in a box the entire time, and nobody's touched it. Uh, and that matters a lot. I got a friend named Reggie, lives here in town. Uh, one of his things he collects are comic books. And I'm going to mention it because he put it on social media, so uh, it, it's out there in the public. But uh, he's got a, a Spider-Man. It's the original appearance of the Punisher. And it's worth a lot of money. You can look it up. But one of the things I noticed when he posted a picture was it was the highest grade. And that's what people want, the highest grade. Now, different collectibles uh, go in and out of favor. And one of them is stamps. There was a time, back in the 30s in particular, during the Depression, children and adults collected stamps. And stamps would often have great value. And the best or most expensive American stamp ever made is this one. And it's a mistake. It's a 24 cent postage stamp and it's got a biplane, but somebody at the U.S. Postal Service messed up the uh, plates and they printed some where the plane is flying upside down. It's called the Inverted Jenny. It's worth about 1.3 million. But stamp collecting's gotten less popular and this thing in the last 20 years has only appreciated about 2%. Sure, $1.3 million stamp, I'd love to find one. But it hasn't been a great investment where once it was. A couple more examples just because I love them. Mark McGuire in uh, 1998 hit a 70th home run. And that was the most that anybody had ever hit. And a kid in the stands out in the bleachers probably paid five to ten bucks for a seat, caught the ball. And the Cardinals, Mark McGuire's team, they went to the kid and they said, We'll give you a signed jersey and a signed bat and a signed glove, which is probably not worth as much as the ball, but sometimes fans will do that. And the kid said, I'll do it, but I want to meet Mark McGuire. And Mark McGuire said no. So the kid kept the ball, sold it at auction for $3 million. Now, a couple things have happened to the value of that ball since the day the kid uh, sold it. First off, three years later, Barry Bonds breaks Mark McGuire's home run record. And then, even worse, both Bonds and McGuire are accused of using performance-enhancing drugs, of using steroids. And that just goes down for everything related to Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire. So now they're saying that that $3 million baseball, on its best day, would only go for about $250,000. Huge loss. Collectibles market, um, there are always stories, great stories, about people who made fantastic amounts of money. But it needs to be the right item. And you see this with cars all the time. Once there's nobody around with a lot of money who was 18 when the car was originally made, the price often declines. They're just less... Um, attractive. The other thing that matters is scarcity and quality. If you're going to buy any kind of collectible, make sure you're getting the absolute best item, the highest rating, or the near highest rating. Because in the end, nobody wants a torn up uh, Roberto Clemente baseball card. If they want a Roberto Clemente baseball card, they want it to look like it did the day that it came out of the pack. This was this week's on collecting. I'll probably come back and talk a little bit more about collecting on a future episode. I also want to talk about some other kinds of investing, like real estate. Until then, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram for more tutorials on investments.